Hi there and welcome to this Strength in Yin practice. So happy that you could join us. Whether this is your first time doing the sequence or maybe your 20th, it's all about building strength and power in the first half. And then the second half is a more relaxing yin practice focused on building flexibility. So for today, you are going to need um, a nice big pillow. If you have your blocks at home, then by all means use them, but not required. And I'm not going to be playing any music for this recording because I love when I just flow to my own tunes and I thought maybe you could put on your favourite playlist and instead um, choose your own soundtrack. Um, if you search Held Haftig in Spotify, I uh, created a few playlists already. There's one called Strength in Yin, which you can pop on. So maybe pause the video, get whatever you need, your blankets, your pillow, Maybe light a candle, make your space feel homely and inviting. And then when you're ready, come to a child's pose on your mat. Just bring your knees about as wide as the mat, toes touching. Stretch out your arms, rest your forehead on the mat. If you like to place a blanket between your knees and your shins, you can do that for added comfort. Just start to focus on your breath here. Starting to use your breath as an anchor to bring you into the present moment. Letting whatever kind of a day or week you're having melt away. All that matters for the next hour is you, your breath, your movements. And at any time you can come to this child's pose, chill out, reconnect with your breath. Letting your breath help you find that calm in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the hurricane. As you take a deep breath into the belly, let the breath fill you up. Breathe into the ribs, let your diaphragm expand, feeling it into the tops of the shoulders. And as you exhale, let the navel come in towards the spine, emptying everything. As you breathe in, take a nourishing breath. Filling your body with something that you need in this moment right now, whether it's strength, compassion, energy, or something else. And as you release, you can let go of something that doesn't serve you. Maybe it's needless worry or tension. Let's just take a few breaths here all together. So breathing in for the count of three, two, and one, and exhale through the mouth. And breathing in slowly through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. One more deep breath into the belly. And exhale through the mouth. Now start to make this a more active child's pose by extending your hands and arms as forwards as they will go, walking your fingertips forwards, really starting to send energy out through the shoulders, through the fingertips. You can bring your forehead off the mat, gazing forwards, deepening the breath still, feeling a little stretch on the front of the shoulders. Breathing, come onto your hands and knees and exhale, bending the elbows or coming into a little push up here. Inhale, sending it back towards your child's pose. 
and coming forwards, exhale into your push up. Inhale on the way up, and keep going, making some small baby push ups here, keeping the elbows hugging into the body. So you've got your chaturanga arms. If you're building a strength, then you can just come about halfway. No need to come all the way down, just taking it to your level. Maybe you want to go a bit quicker. We're just starting to warm up the body, building some heat, getting some strength going in our triceps, our um, chest, our upper body. Just give me about three more here. Come back to all fours. Pressing through all five fingers, spread your fingers wide, ground through the knuckles, tuck your toes under, slowly hover the knees just a few inches off the mat, building a little core strength here. And now send your hips towards the sky into your downwards facing dog. Feet are about hip width apart. Hands are about shoulder width apart. Start to bend one leg and then the other, walking your dog sending energy through the heels and try to send your shoulders back so your wrists, shoulders and hips create a line not too far forwards like this but really pushing back into that dog maybe taking your hands a little wider to create space for the breath opening your chest making sure the head is not um, tense, you can drop the neck, maybe shake your head, yes or no. Maybe find some stillness in your dog, sending the hips up and back, rooting down through the heels, finding some energy towards the mat. Doesn't matter if your feet aren't touching, or maybe you just want to take a little bend in the knees as well. One more breath here. At the end of your next exhale, bend your knees, look forwards. We're going to jump to the front of the mat and come down into our low boat pose. So this is a banana hollow back. Your feet are straight, your upper body is up, your chin is tucked to the chest. We're holding it here for two minutes, breathing deeply. If this gets too much, you can take it down. You can place your hands under your butt. If this is still too much, you can drop one leg and then the other, alternating. If you're one of our Strength and Yin pros, you can add this super cleansing breath that is going to boost your whole immune system. It's the breath of fire. It's a series of short, sharp inhale and exhale. Action comes from the stomach as a pumping action as if you're sniffing a fly off the upper lip. You can go a bit slower if you're newer, or you can go fast. So you should be here or here. Resting if you need a break from the breath, taking your modifications, maybe coming out completely we've got less than a minute to go come to your level building a ton of strength in our core in our core less than half a minute to go you can do it even I need to take a break. Ten more seconds. And relax. Hug your knees into the chest. Come back to your natural breath. And just take a moment, maybe rock your from side to side in your lower back, releasing some tension breath of fire and it really has a cleansing effect on the mind and the body and we're going to use it a few times for our practice bring your legs into a tabletop your knees should be over your hips hands out wide hands to the head 
We're going to go for some ab bags on the inhale, extend your left leg, exhale, twist, left elbow to right knee, inhale, back, exhale, twist, inhale, back, exhale, twist. Keep going. I want you to make sure that you're not bringing your knee forward too much. You're keeping your knees in line with the hips. So you really have to work the core. <sighs> Slow is the knee strong, guys. Keep going. <sighs> A few more. Keep using your breath to go deeper. And hug the knees to the chest. Take a deep breath. We're going to massage your lower spine. We're coming back to our ab bites. This time we're going to give it all we've got and go fast. So use everything. I want to, well, I can't see you, but I am watching you. <laughs> I want to see you doing, going as fast as you can, using your breath, giving it all we've got. Four, five, four, three, two, one. Hug the knees to the chest. Inhale. And now take your hands behind your thighs. We're going to rock and roll along the spine with control. Massaging the vertebra. Using your abs to control yourself. At the end of your next one, we're going to plant our hands at the front of the mat and jump back to your plank, staying here for three breaths, pushing up through the hands, making sure the hips are not too high and not too low, tailbone is tucked, core is locked, <sighs> breathing deeply, one more breath, inhale back to your downward facing dog. On your next inhale, roll forwards to your plank. You can stay here or you can add some shoulder taps. Trying not to move your body too much from side to side, using your core to stabilize. For five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Back to your downwards facing dog. Inhale, roll forwards to plank. You can stay here or drop your knees. Give me some chaturanga push-ups. If you really want to challenge yourself, you can come onto your toes for full push-ups. I am not doing that. <laughs> Keep going for three, two, and one. Come back to your plank, to your down facing dog. And now just bring your knees to the mat, toes touching. Come to a child's pose for just a couple of breaths to reconnect with your breath while we build up some heat. And when you're ready, come back to your downwards facing dog. We're gonna start with our flow. On an inhale, lift your right leg, keeping the hip square. Feel that stretch on the left hamstring. And exhale, knee to nose, shoulders coming over the wrist, getting some height here. Inhale, back to your three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale it back. Exhale, knee to nose. Now take that knee towards the right elbow, to the middle, to the left elbow, to the middle, to the right and inhale to your down dog, three-legged dog. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, rise up to your high crescent lunge. Take a few breaths here. Make sure you have a nice deep bend in the front knee. Back heel is up and pushing towards the back. You can tilt your pelvis a little so your pubic bone comes towards your navel and you feel the stretch on your left hip flexor. 
relaxing the shoulders, arms are strong. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, lower the knee to the earth, cactus the arms. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, reach. Exhale, lower, hover that knee there. You can bring the hands to the hips. We're gonna add a breath of fire for 10 seconds. Exhale completely. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands come to the mat. Step back to your plank. Inhale here. You can either drop your knees to the mat and lower everything, or you can send your weight forwards, coming down to your chaturanga, and then inhale to your upwards facing dog. Elbows are close to the body, gaze is forwards, and then exhale to your downwards facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale it back. Exhale, knee to nose, keeping that knee as high as you can. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, rise to your high crescent lunge. Find that stretch in the right hip flexor. You can also squeeze your thighs a little together for more stability here. <sighs> Inhale, reach up. Exhale, cactus it down. Inhale, reach. Exhale, down. Working on that glute. Inhale, up. Exhale, lower. Hands to hips. Breath of fire. Right, exhale completely. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to back, step back to your plank. Move through your vinyasa. So either knees to mat or chaturanga. Inhale to your back bend. Feeling this nice stretch on the front of the body. Exhale to your downwards facing dog. Take a breath or two here. Of course, come to child's pose if you need to reconnect with that breath. Or if you want to challenge yourself, how much growth do you want tonight? Maybe come forward to that plank, staying here. If you want to push yourself, maybe hovering one leg up and then the other, or adding some chaturanga push-ups, my favorite. <laughs> Wherever you are, working everything, building strength, and then on your next inhale, let's all meet in our downwards facing dog. <sighs> on your next inhale, lift up your right leg into your three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, back. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, rise. High crescent lunge, keep a nice long stance. Straight to the breath of fire. Exhale completely. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, frame your front foot. We're transferring our weight onto our right foot, lifting our leg. Left leg into standing splits. Keep your hips square here. You can take your right ankle with your right hand, maybe pulling the torso towards the body, finding the length through both hamstrings. One more breath here. And then start to bend both knees, coming up into a standing balance. My apartment is far too hot for this right now. So we're finding our balance and we have a few options here. Option one, hands to hips. Option two, hugging the knee in with our left hand. Option three, taking our left toe with peace fingers. Option four, moving towards an extended leg. 
keeping the shoulders broad and open. Standing leg is straight wherever you are. A few breaths here. And come back to your standing balance. Woo! And we're going to straighten that front leg, pointing the toes, lifting the leg as high as you can, really building our psoas muscle here for three. I'm turning around. Two. <laughs> Two. And one. Start to send that leg back, coming towards your flying warrior. Leg and body is parallel to the mat. Hands can come to heart center or by your side. Try and lift up the shoulders and engage the hamstrings on the back leg. Inhale, land the back foot, rise up. Exhale, hands to the mat. In your next vinyasa, maybe take the leg up and come into your three-legged chaturanga. Inhale, upwards facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, your right leg comes up. Exhale, thread your right leg under your left elbow. Your straight leg is here. You roll onto the outside of the foot. Coming up onto your right hand, lifting your left into this fallen triangle pose. Very strengthening for the upper body. One more breath here. Bring your left hand to the mat. Swing your right leg up to your three-legged dog. Inhale. Exhale, bring your right foot on the outside of your right hand. Drop your left knee down to the mat. Here we're moving into a hip flexor stretch. So you can be here on your fingertips, shining your chest forward, sending your pelvis towards the mat. Or maybe you come onto something, a book, or if you have a block, or maybe onto your elbows, or more of a gecko. If you have the more flexibility and you're working in your splits, you can go towards your splits. Wherever you are, let's take five deep breaths. Breathing into that hip flexor muscle. Wherever you send your breath, we'll experience growth. Maybe you just send that breath to yourself today. One more deep breath here. Frame the foot with your hands, tap the left toes under, come to your downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left leg into your three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale to your three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale it back. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, rise to your high crescent lunge. Into your breath of fire. Exhale completely, inhale lengthen, exhale frame the foot, inhale step to your standing splits, keeping those hips square, seeing if you can find a little more length in the back leg, forehead coming towards the shins, one more breath, start to bend both knees coming towards your standing balance, finding your variation. So here, 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 or here. Of course, if you're wobbling, that's all part of the process and no one can see you, so it's perfect. Coming back to that standing balance, straightening the front leg, lifting it high, pointing the toes, you should feel it on the front of the quad and a hip flexor. One more breath. And then start to send your leg back, 
come into your flying warrior. Maybe one side is easier than the other. Can you fly tonight? Inhale, land it. Come to your lunge. Exhale, hands to mat. Maybe try a three-legged chaturanga. Inhale to your upwards facing dog. Exhale, downwards facing dog. Inhale, lift leg lifts. Exhale, thread it under the right elbow. Come onto your side of your foot. Bring the right arm up. I am sweating a lot. I hope you are too. One more breath. And then bring the right hand down. Swing back to your three-legged dog on an inhale. And exhale, left, left foot. <laughs> Come to the outside of that left hand. Bring your right knee down. Find your hip flexor stretch wherever you are. Maybe you want to bring that knee out a little. Maybe you want to move around a little, making it more dynamic. Close your eyes and breathe deeply for five breaths. One more deep breath. On your next inhale, inhale, step back to your downward facing dog. Take your feet as wide as the mat and walk your hands back to your feet, bending your legs, coming into your malasana, your squat. In your squat, make sure the spine is long. You're pressing into the tops, the insides of your thighs, of your elbows, creating this resistance. And your chest is open, you're not hunching. Just close your eyes, breathe into your squat here. Now we're going to play with crow. Um, so if you already know how to go into it, go for it, otherwise I'll talk you through it. We're going to keep that connection between the elbows and the inner thighs. We're going to place our hands on the mat. Really spread the fingers wide, really grounding through the knuckles. And we're gonna lift our hips up over our wrists. And maybe we stay here. Maybe one leg comes up, maybe the other, or maybe both come up. Maybe you wanna try with jumping back if that's you. Look forward, ground through the hands and see where you get to. Face planting is also an option. Come back to your squats. Rest your hands on the mat, round your shoulders. Bring your chin to the chest. Finding a moment of calm after our active arm balancing. Breathing deeply. And now walk back to your downwards facing dog. Inhale to your plank. And now we do 20 push-ups. No, I'm only kidding, calm down to the mat. Of course, you can do those 20 push-ups if you want, but um, maybe you don't want to do that right now. Just bring your forehead to the mat. Bring your hands by your shoulders, underneath your shoulders. Ground the tops of the feet into the mat. Activate the glutes. Exhale fully. And then inhale, peel your upper body off the mat, engaging the back. And exhale, lower. Inhale, coming up. Pressing those feet in, activating the glutes. And exhale, lower. Inhale one more time, maybe coming a little high this time. And exhale, lower. 
inhale one last time maybe bring the feet towards the head coming into a back bend and exhale lower just relax here for a moment and now push yourself back to your child's pose staying in your child's pose you will be pleased to know that the hard part is over now. We just have our yin practice to go, so your body can start to cool down. Cultivating a sense of safety and well-being while you're in your child's pose. Sending some of that nourishing breath towards yourself. When you're ready, slowly make your way out of your child's pose. Come up onto your knees. Just take the legs in front of you while I explain the next pose. You're gonna want your pillow in reaching distance. Bring your legs, your feet as wide as the mat. We're gonna drop our knees to the left. We're gonna walk our torso around to the left. Wrap your pillow, place it under you and come down onto that pillow, resting in twisted deer. So this should feel like a twist around the side, the obliques, maybe a little bit in the lower back on the left side as well. If this is uncomfortable for you, then feel free to come to a normal supine twist. Just bring your legs in the tabletop dropping them to one side and stretching out to the right the main thing is that you feel this twist so in yin as i'm sure you know it's all about staying in the poses for longer time so anything from three to five minutes and this is so that the fascia can really have a chance to start to release tension, melting away any tension. And, you know, we don't have a chance to do this in our more active, strengthening young practice. So we're going to be holding this for three minutes on each side. And this is such a lovely pose to help calm the nervous system. Bring it into a state of relaxation. So I'm going to shut up and let you enjoy. Hopefully you've got some nice music playing. If any time you notice your mind wandering, just use that breath to pull you into the present moment. Got about five more deep breaths here. Really see if you can lengthen the inhale and the exhale. Breathe into that twist. Get everything you can from this pose. The end of your next exhalation. Slowly come up onto your fingertips. Turn your body to face your feet. Bring your knees to the other side. Your feet should still be the same distance as wide as the mat. And walk your hands around so you're twisting to the right this side this time. And when you can twist no more, 
You can calm down onto your pillow. Of course, take your alternative if you're in your supine twist. So I really want you to soften into this pose. You shouldn't feel like you're pushing or pulling or holding on to anything. In the end, we really extract the most benefits when we really soften and surrender. So much of our life is goal orientated we're always trying to work towards a specific outcome but yin is really more about the process and what we get along the way so the more you can relax and feel supported here melting into that pillow or your mat the more you'll be able to let your nervous system come and calm itself down. And use your breath to take you on that journey. I know I keep banging on about it, but your breath is really your most powerful tool. I've had a few nights this week where I start catastrophizing and my energy feels very scattered, but if I really focus on the breath and the present moment, then I can really bring myself to a state of calm. So I hope that you can manage to do the same. About five more deep breaths here. If your mind is somewhere else, then come back to that breath. Come up onto your fingertips, take the pillow away, and just come and lay down on your mat. For a few breaths, short rebound, feeling the after effects of this deep twist. Just relaxing fully into the mat, sinking everything. the end of your next exhale, slowly make your way up to a seat. For the next pose, uh, there's a few options. Either bring your feet together in a diamond. Your feet shouldn't be too close to the body, but a little bit further away. Or if this is uncomfortable for the knees because of your anatomy, then you can just straighten the legs in front of you in a caterpillar. Either or is great. And we're just gonna round the spine completely here. You can let the hands drop to the mat. If you have some headaches, you can bring a block or your hand to support your head.
But again, this pose is really about surrendering. You're not pushing or pulling or trying to get anywhere. The more we can soften, the better. And this really works on the whole thorough columbar fascia from the top of the head to the base of the spine. Really nice to do if you're spending a lot of time on your couch, maybe, <laughs> or hunched over a laptop, like I've been doing. Seeing if you can surrender more. Sometimes you might notice you can go deeper, but listen to your body, don't go too far. Actually, a lot of injuries happen with yin yoga when people force their body to go beyond its range. We only wanna to go to about 70% of our maximum range. This is to keep your body safe. So really listen to that intelligence that your body has. About five more deep breaths here. Your next exhale, slowly start to come up. Maybe shake your legs out a little. And then you can just make a few neck crawls here. Nice and slow. Just relieving any tension in the neck. Now come to um, cross-legged position. We're going to take our, walk our left foot forwards a little and take our right foot onto the left knee, making the shins kind of parallel and kind of stacked on each other. If this doesn't feel good for your knees, then hold, please, and I'll give you an alternative. Um, if you're still with me and this feels okay, but we're going to walk our hands, fingertips forwards a little and being careful of my candles and just fold. And this is really a deep stretch for the right glutes. So if you want an alternative, you can either come into pigeon or you can come on your back, placing the right foot on your left thigh, reaching forwards for your left shin, sending your pelvis towards the mat for an intensified stretch or pulling your left leg closer. So wherever you are, maybe you're in your pigeon as well, you should be feeling this lovely deep stretch and release for the right glutes. Going to your level of comfort. Breathing deeply. Seeing if you can soften your face a little. Have you got any tension in between your eyebrows, in your jaw and your tongue? You don't need to look pretty for anyone, so just let your face relax.
about five more deep breaths here. the end of your next exhale slowly roll up if you're on your back switch to the other side if you're sitting cross-legged then we're going to change sides bringing your left and um, your left foot on your right knee trying to keep the shins somewhat parallel and then walking your hand forwards if you're on your back, then your left foot is on your right thigh. If you're in pigeon, I'm sure you know what you're doing. Keeping those hips a little square, sending the pelvis towards the mat, coming onto your elbows, dropping the forehead. Breathing into that left glutes, all 10 muscles, and then the fascia, the IT band. After our lunges, So since this is a yang yin practice, I want to talk about the yin and the yang of self-care. So self-care really has two sides to it that you can use to look after yourself. So I think we're all familiar with the more yin side of self-care. It's all about that compassionate kindness towards yourself, taking moments of rest and recharge. It might sound cliche, but taking a relaxing bath or unwinding on the sofa with Netflix and some snacks. <laughs> Doing what you need to do, maybe switching off from your phone, taking a break from scrolling and looking at news. Um, you know, take doing what you need. And there's also this more young element to self-care, which is more about taking ownership of a situation and doing what you can in your power to, to care for yourself. So for example, if you're having unhealthy conflict with someone, it's maybe addressing that, or perhaps if you're feeling like you've lost control of your self-care it's maybe making a plan for your workout schedule or setting reminders in your phone to do these things that matter so much i have this amazing habit tracking app that i use to try and remind myself to drink my juice and take my medication etc and um, maybe i don't do these things every day but the intention is there so maybe think about whether your self-care is more yin or more yang and maybe one small thing that you can do to help redress that balance a little bit. So we have a few more breaths here. Slowly come up. We're going to roll over to our front, onto our belly. We're going to come into a Sphinx pose, coming up onto the elbows. If you like, you can place your pillow under the chest. You can drop the head. If you like it a little bit more intense or you have more flexibility in your lumbar spine, you can come onto your hands and stretch your um, arms out straight. This is quite intense and you really want to be able to relax here. So I'm going to come onto my elbows.
So you may feel a little bit of compression in your lumbar spine and a little bit of compression is actually quite healthy and good. So this back bend is a very nice counter pose to all of the sitting that we're probably doing at the moment. Supports the overall health and flexibility of the spine, which also supports the immune system and basically every system in the body. A few more minutes here, I'm going to be quiet so you can focus on your breath and your internal experience or maybe just your playlist. Have five more deep breaths here. At the end of your next exhale, just bring your hands under your forehead into a pillow. Relax here for a few breaths. Just enjoying this little rebound, feeling safe. And for our very last pose, you're gonna to come to a wall in your apartment. You can bring a little pillow under your, by the wall if you like, or you can bring your mat to the wall. We're gonna bring our legs up the wall, like so. And we're either going to stay here, which is, this is an amazing pose in terms of benefits. It will really induce the parasympathetic nervous system, the system responsible for healing, rest, digestion. Also great to do before bed to make you nice and sleepy, bring your heart rate down, bring your blood pressure down. So staying here, or if you want to add an inner thigh stretch, oh, sorry, plants. <laughs> you can widen your legs. If you're in your wide leg stance, then really make sure you're relaxing everything. We hold a lot of tension in our pelvic floor, muscles around this area, so consciously relax everything. Breathing deeply. If you like, you can place one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest. 
really connect to your energy centers here. So you can focus on your heart space, sending feelings of kindness and love towards yourself. Maybe feeling gratitude that you're in a place where you can practice yoga, that you have fresh, fresh oxygen to breathe in your apartment. Now five more deep breaths here. If you want, you can stay here longer. If, you're, if this is right before bed, then maybe stay in 10 minutes with your legs up the wall will really prepare you for a lovely deep sleep. Otherwise, bring your legs back, come back to your mat gracefully if you can. <laughs> doesn't matter really. And then just prepare yourself for your Shavasana. If you've got a blanket, bring, bring your blanket on you. Maybe place something over your eyes. And just relax here for a few minutes. Releasing all effort, letting your body sink into the mat, relaxing your face. You can stay here longer if you like. Otherwise, take a deep breath into the belly. 
start to invite any intuitive movements into the body, maybe wiggling your toes, your fingers. You can take a full body stretch. Maybe hugging the knees into the chest, rocking gently from side to side, massaging the lower spine. Whenever you're ready, roll onto your side. Just stay here, feeling safe for a moment. Taking some deep, sweet breaths. And then when you're ready, pushing yourself up to the seat. Coming into your cross leg position, bringing your hands to your thighs. Just taking a few breaths here. Using your breath to find that sense of stillness. Noticing how the mind feels, how the body feels, how your energy feels. And bring your hands to your heart. Really thank yourself for your practice. It's not easy to find the motivation to do these things for ourselves in these kind of times. So really acknowledge yourself for showing up today. And finally, just know that whatever challenge you're going through at the moment, you have all the tools inside yourself to meet it with courage, grace and compassion. I really wish you a great rest of your day. Do something nice for yourself. Thank you so much. Namaste.